Hi, today we are going to be making uh, a traditional Mexican seven layer bean dip. Although mine has so many layers I've lost count. Uh, this recipe is a great recipe to have for the big game on Sunday, although tonight we're having it for dinner. So what I'm going to start uh, showing you guys is first I'll talk about the layers that most people usually put in a seven layer bean dip. First you have beans and that's your base layer. Uh, then tonight we actually, this is the great thing about this dip, is you can put anything in it you want. We have leftover rice, tur ground turkey meat, and onions that we made stuffed peppers with the other night. So that's going to be one of my layers tonight. Uh, first layer, and by the way I have to mention this, for the, the person who spends a lot of time in the kitchen and just needs some extra gadgets, Pampered Chef Mini Spatula is awesome. It is small, yet it's very long, so it can go down into jars, and you can actually use it without feeling like you have this big monstrosity of a spatula. So, we're going to start with our beans. Kind of already got that ready a little bit. I used, I usually make my own refried beans, but for this, I um, use the Rosarita traditional refried beans. They're very good. And to my beans, because I like things very spicy, I added crushed red peppers and ground cayenne pepper, which is also still red pepper, just crushed. Also, the great thing about this dip is anybody can make it. It's pretty easy. Um, when we eat it as a meal, I just like to put it on this big plate, and when you serve it, you really should put it in something very shallow, because your, your guests company are going to want to just come up and you'll see whenever it's finished and just take a chip or a spoon and grab off the layers but kind of keep the layers intact and you can really only do that if you have a shallow dish. I'm not baking a whole whole lot tonight because it'll just be me and guns knives and watches eating this although we can eat a lot of this. Uh, I'm still trying to be uh, kind of moderate about it. Just spread it out so it's nice and even. Okay, first layer. Second layer, I'm going to add the rice and beef mixture. Now, I prefer to eat this kind of cold. I know it sounds kind of weird. But this is not traditionally a hot dish. So I just took this out of the refrigerator, let it warm up just a little bit, because we're going to eat this pretty, pretty soon. Now that's ground turkey, but right. most traditionally people make it out of beef. Right. We do not eat ground beef on a regular basis, if at all no. anymore. It's a special thing. Right. We actually prefer the taste of ground turkey because when you use ground turkey, there's hardly any fat. I believe it's 98% fat free. And the taste and flavors of everything else in your dish really shine through instead of it just having that really beefy flavor. It's not quite so overpowering. Okay, so we've got our first two layers. That's pretty easy. We're going to go back over here and we're going to add... Grab a few ingredients. We're going to add salsa. We like paste chunky salsa. We're pretty, pretty simple. Because it ain't made in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> New York City? <laughs> Just spread it on there. You, you want to try not to make any of the layers too thick, but you know, where, they, where they're all about even. Maybe just a little bit more. Now remember, tomatoes are going to go on the top too. That might have been a little... No, that's good. Okay. Next layer down. Alright. Now I'm going to grab the sour cream. I always try to make everything I cook just a little bit healthier. So we use fat-free sour cream, and the great thing about fat-free sour cream 
a lot of people say, well, you got to watch out for fat-free foods because then they add a lot of other ingredients that you don't need. Not so with fat-free sour cream. It only has two grams of fiber, or I'm sorry, sugar. So a lot of times when things are reduced or no fat, they add lots of sugar to hide that. And sour cream is not one of them. And you really can honestly not taste the difference. And you just cut a lot of calories by doing that. Just kind of throw it on there right now first. And I'll go back, take my handy dandy spatula. And it's okay. In fact, it's really good. If your sour cream kind of gets mixed in with your salsa, it's kind of one of those layers. It's going to kind of blend in a little bit with the salsa, but that just makes it better. Just a tiny bit more. And I promise you, if you make this for your Super Bowl party, you're going to want to make a double batch of this <laughs> because people will eat it. Okay, we're going to go back over here. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. No, cheese. What am I thinking? Or actually, not even cheese. Shredded lettuce. Now, I normally never do this. Never, never, never. But in this case, it makes it a lot easier to go ahead and buy the lettuce already mixed up. Or already shredded, I'm sorry. If not, you spend a lot of time shredding lettuce. But you really don't need that much. So if you bought a whole head, I don't normally eat iceberg lettuce either. So I wouldn't really want a whole head of it. I would I would just waste it. Kind of pat it down a little bit so it kind of gets in that mixture. Now cheese. And I have to say, we buy cheese in bulk because we go through cheese quite a bit. And this is from Sam's and it's just Baker's and Chef's brand is what it says. It's, I guess, their brand or just whatever it is they carry at wholesale and it is excellent cheese. And that's a Mexican cheese. Yes. It's basically a three cheese mix. Actually, it's a four cheese. Four cheese. It is Monterey Jack, cheddar, queso, quesadilla, and azadero cheese. Okay. And the great thing about this dish is that you can make it however you want it. Let's say you don't like cheese. You don't have to put cheese on it. If you don't like lettuce, you don't have to put lettuce on it. I don't like black olives. So normally people put black olives on it. I don't, I don't really care for that. I should say we don't care for that either. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you can see, this is getting pretty thick. It's getting pretty meaty. So... We're going to move back on now over here to our vegetables. I've already chopped up some things. I um, had these left over. I just had like half of a yellow pepper and half of a red pepper, bell peppers. Chopped those up already. So that's just going to be kind of an extra that goes on at tonight. I don't normally have those. Chives. I've already rinsed them. Just kind of put the whole... Let's grab a couple out first. We don't use all of them. Just put them together. Make sure you don't cut your finger. That would be bad. And actually, these aren't chives. I should re I should re restate my statement. These are green onions. And if you plant these at home, these are something one of my favorite things to do. Some people call them spring onions too, because they come up in the early spring. And these were picked before they actually grew more at the base. And what I do is when I plant them, I let this part, when it looks like it's ready to cut before it dies, I cut this off, but then I leave the bottom part and let it get a little bit bigger, and then I use the bottom part too. The ones you buy in the store, they pick them really young. So there's no onion down there for you to use. Okay, we're gonna go 
back over here, sprinkle those on top. They add some flavor. They're not too overpowering, but they just look kind of pretty too. All right. Now I'm going to add one green onion to my other, and I'm sorry, green pepper to my other pepper mixture. I'm a little tired tonight. It's easy to do on camera. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My garbage bowl. Let me grab that. It's got some eggshells in it. Ooh, it just doesn't need those in it. I'm going to throw this in there. And this goes in my compost bin. So, I'm going to get everything out of the green pepper. These parts, you don't really, they don't taste very good. And they're chewy. Not, just not that great. And then I'm going to rinse the inside back out of my green pepper. And then what I like to do is put my green pepper on the side. Put it like this. I'm going to stop there because I might not use the whole green pepper. I want it to kind of cut it in half. And then just kind of make my way around the half circle there. Whoop. Flying green peppers. Okay. Back over to this side. And I am no professional chef or professional with the knives. I just kind of do it the way I think it makes sense. I'm going to throw these. And with there, I'm going to save the other part of my green pepper. I cook a lot of Mexican food, so I'll probably save it for a quesadilla. Okay. This is going to be another layer. I'm kind of running out of room for my layers. It's kind of want to all fall to the side, so you just kind of have to smoosh it down in there a little bit. This is another great thing to make in the summertime because it doesn't heat your house up. It's not you're not baking anything yet. It's it's kind of like a meal. In itself, because there's so much in it, you almost I like, almost cover. I guess I guess you do almost cover every food group, don't you? We've got beans, we've got rice, we've got meat, we've got vegetables, we've got fruits, which people don't think are fruits. <laughs> okay, with my tomato, I cut that part off, and then I turn my tomatoes like this, and then like this. Quarter them. Yep, and then I go back. And I try to do it again. Eight them. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna turn them on their sides. This. And I like to really chop things. Not super small, but small enough so that it gets evenly distributed over your food and you get a tomato almost every time you take a bite. But you still keep it where there's a texture. Right, there's still a nice little chunk of a tomato there. Oops, I'm losing tomatoes. We're going to save that tomato there. And I have no shame picking something off the counter and putting it in my food. My counters are clean. If you ever watched Julia Child, she did it a lot. Oh, I need this. Okay, last thing I'm going to throw on there are banana peppers. And even though they're already cut, I'm just going to take my knife and just kind of randomly kind of go over them again. Chop them up. Kind of fine. That way, again, they, they get evenly distributed over the dip. And I love the colors in this. It's so pretty. Okay. The last thing I'm going to throw on the top is 
It's called Fiesta Party Dip Mix, and it's from Tastefully Simple. Now, I have to go on a little rant here because Tastefully Simple is um, a lot of very easy mixes and things like that to make, and I don't generally cook like that. Uh, this is actually supposed to, you're supposed to make a dip out of it. But what I'm going to do is just kind of sprinkle it over the top, you know, just to give it a little bit of more seasoning, a little bit of extra something when you bite into it. What are the ingredients in that? Uh, it's a mix of onion, salt, again, crushed red pepper, paprika, garlic, parsley, sugar, and then it says spices. So really anything could be in that that spices category. Mm -hmm. But there is also salt in it. So, you know, just a sprinkling on the top, it'll add just a little bit of flavor. Excuse me. And there we go. We have our however many layer bean dip. Uh, it's kind of undefinable. You can, the sky's the limit with it. You can do whatever you want. That's how about how high it. Yeah, it's pretty thick. Think we can finish that tonight? Yeah, I think we can do a good job on it. I think so, we can knock it out. So anyway, make this for your Super Bowl, Super Bowl party. Make it for an evening at home and serve it with. Stay there. Across, so on the border, Mexican Grill and Cantina Chips. They are really good. It's like going to your local Mexican restaurant. They're light, they're airy, they're crispy, and they're not too salty. And they're, they're great. reasonable. Yes, they're not expensive. There you go. Well, this is Guns, Knives, and Watches. And this is Guns, Knives, and Watches. And the seven layer bean dip for the Super Bowl weekend. Or any time you just want a nice, refreshing meal, basically. Have a good one. Have a good one.